What are the best rackets for a one-handed backhand? Well, most people will look at the greatest one-handed backhands in tennis history. They'll see what those players play with and automatically they associate those rackets as the greatest rackets for a one-handed backhand. And these rackets happen to be the Wilson Pro Staff and the Head Prestige. And it's not necessarily the models that I'm holding here, which is the RF97 and the Prestige Pro. For example, Stefan Edberg, one of the greatest one-handers in the history of tennis, played with the Pro Staff. Of course, Roger Federer played with the Pro Staff. And the Head Prestige, one of the classic rackets that a lot of people associate as a great racket for a one-handed backhand player, such as Gustavo Curten and Tommy Haas play with the head prestige. And look, these rackets are really nice rackets for a one-handed backhand. But when you go a little bit deeper and you look at other great one-handed backhands, you're gonna see no rhyme or reason. In other words, there's gonna be all kinds of rackets that great one-handers have played with. For example, Francesca Schiavoni won the French Open. She had a phenomenal one-handed backhand with the Babolat Pure Arrow. Stan Wawrinka and Denis Shapovalov, who have amazing one-handed backhands, play with the Yonex racket. Now, generally, people always say that the Yonex racket is a great racket for a two-handed backhand, which is also not true. Obviously, if Stan Wawrinka, arguably one of the greatest one-handed backhands in the history of the game, can use a Yonex racket and hit that one-hander, the Yonex is not just a racket that works for a two-handed backhand. And how about the greatest WTA one-handed backhand in tennis history, Justine Anon, did it with the Wilson Hyper Hammer 5.2. Not generally a racket that you would associate as being good for a one-handed backhand. Now why that is, I'm gonna get into a little bit later in this video where I'm gonna discuss the specs that are gonna work really well if you happen to have a one-handed backhand, especially if you are a recreational level player. And before I do that, I wanna debunk one of the greatest myths regarding which rackets are best for a one-handed backhand. I have heard so many times that if you have a one-handed backhand, you should try to play with a racket with a smaller head size. Now here I have a Gamma RZR Baba 117 that has a 117 square inch racket head size. And I'm gonna put these three rackets to the test and I'm gonna see how I'm performing my one-handed backhand with each one of these rackets. But here's why it doesn't make any sense that a smaller racket head size is better for a one-handed back generally. When we're talking about rack head sizes, when you go up in head size, your sweet spot is bigger and you are gonna get more power on your serve, on your forehand. And why wouldn't that be the case on your backhand? It doesn't make any difference. Now just take the example of Roger Federer who played with a smaller racket head size and then switched to a 97 racket head size. Everybody knows that Roger Federer's backhand got better. It didn't make that much of a difference, but the one in the backhand improved maybe one to 5% because now Roger Federer's sweet spot was larger. You take a look at some other players like Richard Gasquet or the Bryan brothers. Richard Gasquet plays with a head liquid metal. I learned this on the Tennis Nerd website and the head size is 100 square inches. The Bryan brothers later on in their career played with the Babolat Pure Drive which also has a 100 square inch racket head. And all these players have phenomenal one-handed backhand so it doesn't make any sense that you have to play with a smaller racket head size in order to hit a good one-handed backhand. Now, should you go oversize like the Bubba and play with a 110 or even larger racket head? Now, that's gonna be a little bit tricky because the optimal racket head size for tennis racket is 100 square inches. Yes, it can be a little bit smaller or maybe a little bit bigger, but generally that's the optimal range for racket head size. When you go too big, now the sweet spot is too large and you might lose a little bit control. Now, as I already said, there are gonna be some important specs to consider if you have a one-handed backhand. And let me just give you a brief overview over each of the rackets that I'm gonna be testing. So here we have a recreational level racket that's extremely light at 250 grams, but this racket is also head heavy and this is gonna be an important spec to consider. On the other hand here, we have the RF97, which is a very heavy racket, but it's interestingly very head light. And it's gonna be interesting to see how I'm hitting my one-hander with the RF97. And also we have the Head Prestige Pro, which is also very head light. And the overall weight of this racket is less than the RF97. So we have a nice spectrum of rackets here for the one-handed backhand. 
and let's go test these out. So let's start off with the RF97, Roger Federer's choice. I'm gonna guide you through what it feels like to hit a one-handed backhand with this racket. So this racket feels extremely nice. It's got a nice feel, but you do have to hit the ball in the center. If you hit it off center, you do lose a significant amount of power. On that particular one, I did hit it pretty clean. On that one was a little bit off center. So this racket is not very forgiving. It does require you to hit it, the ball cleanly, but it does feel pretty good. The fact that the racket is a very headlight, it makes it a little bit easier to swing up despite the heavy weight of this racket. Me personally, this racket is a tad too heavy for me and as I'm taking cuts on my one-handed backhand it doesn't feel too comfortable on my arm. I'm hitting the ball quite well but I do feel a lot of strain especially this last one that I hit close to the edge. I just feel it a little bit in my hand and throughout my whole arm. That one too. I hit it off the frame and it did not feel good at all. Let me hit a couple more. Okay let me hit this one really hard. Oh, uh, Okay, let me hit a few more with the Prestige. Oh yeah, there's a lot more power in the Prestige compared to the RF97. Now, of course, all of this is relative to the player. So the fact that I'm feeling more power with this racket because it's lighter, this does not mean that you're necessarily going to feel more power as well. Of course, strings are important too. They do play a difference. And on the RF97 was all the power and gut. Here we have RPM Blast, so the strings are a little bit more powerful on this racket as well. But I can tell you that as I'm swinging with this racket, I do feel a lot more comfort. Personally, I prefer this one over the RF97 when it comes to my one-handed backhand. Let me hit a couple of them hard. And one more. Off the frame. I didn't feel it in my arm, that's good. There it is. All right, guys, now the Bubba Razor 117 racket is 249 grams. Can you believe that? It's super light, but it's also head heavy. And I can tell you right off the bat, this racket is too light for me. I don't feel the same mass as I'm swinging. Of course, the racket is maneuverable, but interestingly, as I'm hitting these backhands, I find that I'm getting less topspin. Now, why might that be the case? I think because this racket is so head heavy, it's more difficult for me to achieve that vertical swing path and uh, employ top spin on the ball. Of course, I can do it, but it's more at the mechanical level where I'm forcing top spin by going up like this. But if I let my one-hander go, I feel like the backhand flattens out quite a bit. And this has to do with the weight distribution between the handle and the racket head. So <laughs> from testing these rackets, it's clear to see that a headlight racket is very advantageous when it comes to the one-handed backhand. And why might that be the case? Well, we have to consider the biomechanics of a one-handed backhand to understand why a headlight racket is going to benefit most players. So what happens on the one-handed backhand is the following. It is the weakest shot in tennis. And why is that the case? Because we're hitting it with the weak side of the arm. You also have the hand on top in an Eastern backhand grip. There's nothing underneath the hand, so to speak, except the top of our fingers and the thumb. So we're in a weak position. There's no other shot in tennis that's like this. On the forehand, the hand is behind the racket. On the serve, the hand is behind the racket. On the two-handed back, and we have the non-dominant hand behind the racket, giving a lot more support. And also, if we want to employ a vertical swing path on the ground strokes, we have the hand more underneath the racket on the forehand. It's easier to go up. On the two-handed back end, it's easier to go up because we have the non-dominant hand underneath the racket. However, on the one-handed back end, there's nothing underneath and it's more difficult to go up because of it. So, if you play with a racket that's too head heavy, for example, the Baba 117, even though it's a light racket, the fact that it was very head heavy made it more difficult for me to achieve a vertical swing path. With the RF97 and especially with the Head Prestige Pro, because the racket is so head light, it was a lot easier to go up because less of the weight is in the racket head, more of the weight is in the handle, and it makes the vertical swing path more intuitive. So, a tip for you, when you're selecting a racket that's going to suit your one-hander, you want to select a racket that is head light. Now, the difficulty you're going to run into if you 
for example, find the RF97 too heavy and you stay in the pro staff line of rackets and you go down in weight, you're gonna notice something interesting that as you go down in the weight, the distribution of the weight goes more towards the racket head. Now, this is not true for every single racket, but it is something that I have noticed, which is that as you stay in the same line of rackets, the lower the weight goes, the more head heavy the racket becomes. So you're gonna have to do some testing. You're gonna have to get some demos. You're gonna have to find the weight that suits you, remember? I recommend a general weight for recreational players around 300 grams and novice to intermediates can even go lower to 270 or below. Advanced recreational players and also some intermediates will be able to play with the racket weight just like the pros. It's going to depend on the individual player and also on the muscle memory that they've built on the genetics and so on. Now another tip that's going to be super important for you when selecting a racket that's gonna suit your one-handed back end is to go down in grip size. If you play with a grip that's too large and if the gap between the palm of your hand and the tip of your finger is too big because there's not much underneath your hand, you're gonna have less support when you try to employ a vertical swing pad. So by selecting a grip size that's smaller, the tip of your fingers is gonna be closer to your palm and you're gonna have more support and that vertical swing pad that's so important on the one-hander is gonna be a lot easier to accomplish. Now you're probably waiting for me to recommend specific type of rackets and I can't do that. In the beginning of the video, I told you that a great one-handed backhand is possible with any type of racket, even a racket that's head heavy like the Wilson Hyper Hammer 5.2, a super head heavy racket and Justine and on played unbelievable one-handed backhands with that racket. So you have to understand that you can even take a frying pan and hit a one-handed backhand. When we're talking about selecting the correct equipment, this is possibly one to 5% going to improve your backhand. What is the most important thing? It's your technique. So with good technique, the racket is not gonna matter so much. You have to learn the fundamentals of the one-handed backhand. And also you have to work on all the other aspects that are gonna make your one-handed backhand great. You're gonna have to work on your footwork, on your fitness, on your flexibility, range of motion, and so on. Now on top of that, you're gonna play with a racket that's right for you and that's gonna give you that one to 5% advantage over other rackets. Don't make the mistake and look at what Federer and what Tommy Haas and what Guga or Stefan Edberg are playing with and think that this is the greatest racket in the history for a one-handed backhand. It is a great racket. These rackets have great specs for a one-handed backhand. But remember, it's not the racket, it's your technique that's gonna make you a better player.